What's up YouTube? My name is Caden and you're watching Gas at Garage. Today, we're going to be working on this Kawasaki Mule 600 right here. It's been having some carburetor issues and it will start and run, but the issue it's having is as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it dies, which is telling me that this thing probably has some sort of idling issue and possibly a dirty carburetor. So in this video, I'm going to be taking the carburetor off and showing you how to clean and look at a carburetor on this Kawasaki engine. All right, guys, so we've got this Kawasaki Mule 600 right here. Um, and the owner was saying it starts and runs, but as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it dies, which usually means it's just an idling issue and or a dirty carburetor. So what I've done here is I've opened the seat up and opened up the bed and I removed this panel right here. And right now I'm trying to get this little hose off right here so I can fully remove that panel to access the carburetor. So once I do that, I can actually take the carburetor off and I can actually fully examine it and really see what's going on with it. All right, so I've removed all the clips on this uh, cover right here and I've also taken the hose clamp off on this hose. So now I can actually remove this cover right here. It looks like I'm actually gonna need to remove that other hose to fully get this cover off. All right, I got this other hose off. Now I can uh, remove this cover here. All right, so here's the carburetor right here. What I'm gonna do, hit the throttle, you can see the throttle moving right there. Now I'm gonna start removing these lines so I can get the carburetor off and actually take a look at it. Okay, so I have the carburetor off of the engine here, and what I did was I had to unbolt the nuts on the end of these studs. Um, I also had to disconnect the uh, crankcase uh, breather line right here, and then I also disconnected the fuel line right down there, and I pinched it off with some vice grips so it doesn't leak and spill gasoline everywhere. And then I also disconnected the choke cable here by rotating um, this little piece to the side and I took it out through that little groove right there um, and then I also disconnected the throttle linkage from that which is right here. I'm looking at this carburetor and it looks like it is kind of dirty. It does need to be cleaned a little bit so first I'm going to take off this uh, this drain line right here and then I'm gonna undo the bolt on the bottom of that thing. And yes, this is spilling gas right now because when you turn this thing upside down, it leaks gas out. So that's how you uh, drain a carburetor before you take the bolt off. So I'm just gonna kinda keep doing that and pour all the gas out like this. But now I think I've drained out most of the gas, so I'm going to take the bowl off and start cleaning this thing. All right, so the first thing you're going to do when you're cleaning a carburetor like this is I'm going to take off the nut, or the bolt, I should say, on the bottom of the bowl here. And they may be pretty tight, so maybe put a little bit of oomph into it. Take this bolt out, 
and then remove the bowl of the carburetor. Now that in there looks pretty dirty. That's all rust in there, which means a little bit of water got in this thing at one point, which will probably explain why it's not running very well and difficult to start. So I'm gonna take some carb spray here. Yeah, look at all that dirty uh, liquid in there. You do not want that inside your carburetor. I'm gonna wanna try and wipe this thing out as best you can. Now, if you do have corrosion on the inside of your carburetor bowl, what a lot of people will do is they'll spray it with carb spray like this and then let it soak for a minute. And then after they do that, they will take a screwdriver and actually start scraping the bowl like this. Now, this brown stuff in here, I can, it looks like it's actually coming off so I can scrape it out a little bit and loosen it up. All right, so now that most of that's loosened up, I can spray the rest of it out. All right, that looks a lot better. Now, next thing you're gonna wanna do is remove the uh, pin right here on carburetor float. That's this piece right here. So that little pin right there. Now, what the carburetor float does is when the carburetor bowl fills up with gasoline, this thing will float up to the top and it will press this into that hole right there. And what that'll do is stop fuel from flowing into the carburetor bowl and it'll prevent the carburetor from overflowing, but it'll keep enough fuel in the bowl to allow the engine to have a small supply of gasoline to run. Now this needle, it's still nice and rubbery. It hasn't dry rotted and it looks pretty clean. So I'll set that aside and make sure, make sure you're, you're working on a clean cloth like this because you don't want any of the stuff that you spray out of the carburetor to get back into it once you've cleaned it. So that said, I'm going to take another piece of towel here, put another towel down because I don't want all that stuff to get into my nice clean carburetor. So next I'm going to remove this just like that, set that aside. Now, this carburetor has been opened up, meaning the bowl's been taken off of it, so I can now take some carb spray and spray out the inside of this carburetor along with all the little holes and things and little passages inside of it. And you're gonna wanna wear eye protection when doing this because I've had before where you spray into one of these little ports and another one of the ports sprays it right back in your face and you get carb spray in your eyes. And trust me, this stuff is not the kind of liquid you want to get in your eyes. It will hurt you. So wear eye protection. Now this right here is the, is the main jet that I'm spraying out. And every little hole and orifice you find in this thing, including um, the fuel inlet, you're gonna want to spray out because you're not sure if there's any sort of junk or bits and pieces of um, sand or dirt or whatever in there. So you wanna make sure every little nook and cranny of this carburetor is cleaned. And you also wanna try and wipe off any grime or dirt or debris that could be inside of this carb. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm also just gonna spray the outside of this thing off, um, just cause I'm here. Just kinda get it cleaned up and looking a little bit better. Now a carb spray, you don't really wanna get it all over your hands like I am, but I mean, it's not really gonna hurt you. It just feels really, really cold and it will kinda dry your skin out. So just be careful.
this thing will start up. So what I did to adjust the idle on this thing was I went back to the throttle assembly back here and I adjusted that screw and also the screw on the throttle itself on the carburetor. And it is helping a little bit, but what I'm realizing about this thing is that it probably needs to be jetted up a little bit, meaning the main jet needs to be a little bit larger in order for this thing to run well. because. In order for it to start and run, I'm having to pull the choke. Um, and to keep it running, I either have to give it gas or hold the choke out like that in order to keep this engine running. So what that's telling me is that it's running a little bit lean and it, it needs to have a little bit more fuel going into it. So I'm gonna come back to this thing tomorrow and see if I can drill out the jet a little bit to possibly make this thing run a little bit more rich so it will idle. So I will see you tomorrow. All right, guys, it's the next day. So what I'm going to do now is take the uh, carburetor off again and uh, remove the main jet so I can drill it out with a uh, very fine, small bit on a uh, Dremel tool that I have. And that will make the whole inside of the main jet a little bit larger, which will allow more fuel to get in, making the fuel to air mixture a little bit more rich. So that should allow this thing to run without me having to pull the choke. So uh, I'm not gonna film taking the carburetor off again because you've already seen that. So I'm just gonna jump right over to where I'm drilling out the jet. All right, so I've got um, the carburetor off and I took the bowl off um, and this right here, is the main jet. So I'm gonna get a flathead screwdriver and just be careful when removing jets like this because they are made of brass and if they're really, really tight, you can't really put too much force on them otherwise you will ruin the little grooves in it for the screwdriver. Um, you have to watch out more for that when tightening it but also when loosening it as well because sometimes the main jet is actually down inside this hole, like it'll actually go in there like that. So what I'm gonna do now is I have a Dremel tool here with a very, very tiny engraving bit on there. I mean, you can see how tiny it is compared to my finger. And you can see the little hole through the jet right there. And I'm gonna take the tip of this and put it into the jet and then just very slowly bore out the jet just a little bit and then I'm going to reinstall it in the carburetor but not before blowing it out with some carb spray because you don't want any of those very fine metal shavings getting into the carburetor and the fuel system um, that we literally just cleaned. So after I drill this out I'm going to reinstall it and then put the carburetor back on and uh, we'll see how the engine runs. I've got the uh, main jet drilled out with the Dremel, and uh, it might be hard to see on camera, but the hole is slightly larger. Um, so I'm gonna reinstall it in the carburetor and put the carburetor back on the engine, and we will see how this thing runs.
All right, so after putting the carburetor back on, I did start this thing up and it starts up and runs a lot better, but for some reason it's still not idling. So I may need to uh, buy a rebuild kit for the carburetor, but I'll just do that later because um, the purpose of this video was to just show you how to clean the carburetor on one of these things. And the carburetor was dirty, so I was able to show you how to clean that. So uh, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and I will see you in the next video.